Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well. And welcome back to another very interesting case. We have an infection here. And I'm almost certain, 99% certain, that this is a yeast infection, which you may call thrush or candidiasis. So this is most likely a strain of fungi called Candida albicans. Now you may be thinking, well, how do you know that? How do you know it's not you know, aspergillus or a bacterial infection? And the keen-eyed among you, particularly those who, you, who work in healthcare, you might think, you might already have guessed that because the ear does kind of look a little bit fungal, perhaps, because it's, you know, extremely wet and looks kind of sluffy, but um, w without any obvious kind of erythema, which is redness. But I know that this is a yeast infection because in part two of this video, I will show you the microscope footage. So I took a little sample of the debris, um, put it under the microscope, um, added some some chemicals to the slide to make the, the you know skin and debris disappear uh, and then to leave behind the fungal elements and we can clearly see f uh, yeast cells under the microscope in abundance so I'll share that footage with you in part two um, so this is a this is we, we've shown yeast infections I think once before on the channel um, but this is a very similar pathogen to what would cause oral thrush or you know uh, candidiasis under your arms or whatever um, and um, it's not usually a problem it you can it can become very complex and, and a nasty condition if the the uh, candida gets into your bloodstream but um, that doesn't usually happen again candida infections like this are more common in people who have a compromised immune system and um, you know, diabetic patients and um, you know HIV patients and such um, this patient doesn't have any of those things, and, and yet this, this infection is ongoing. You know, this is a routine suction, and um, I'm not entirely sure what the solution is. We've tried caniston drops. Um, that certainly elongates the time that's needed between suctions, but um, the infection just keeps coming back over and over and over again. Um, so we're going to need some kind of solution to this, and I'm not really sure what the solution is. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, you may, now you may be thinking, well, yeast, hang on, isn't that, you know, a helpful thing? Don't we like yeast? You know, isn't that uh, in our bread and used to make beverages and so on? Yes, definitely. But it, this is not the type of yeast that you would want to add to, you know, a homebrew, you know, homebrew beer or wine or something like that. Because it, the candida albicans, this particular type of yeast will not convert the sugars to alcohol. Um, so if, if it comes into contact with glucose or maltose or something like that, um, it will turn that into acid and gas, which is definitely not what you want in a pint of beer. So, um, although I have to say the, the yeast cells look very similar to brewer's yeast. Um, and yeast cells, interestingly, if you study the kingdom of fungi, which is its own kind of kingdom within the realms of biology, like you have kingdom of animals and kingdom of plants and kingdom monera and so on, and kingdom of protists, fungi is its own thing. And they're very, very complex. And yeast is somewhat unique in that sense because it's it, they like unicellular organisms. So they're their own cells, single-celled organisms, unlike you know, aspergillus, which is like a multicellular connection like to, to make a mold, for example, or a mushroom. Just hoovering up this last bit of dead skin. It was at this point that the patient started to feel a little uncomfortable. Um, so there, there was... Um, a little bit of a protest here, which is absolutely fair enough. I mean, we're, we're pretty deep in the ear now. The eardrum is lurking over that hill just there. You can see just how kind of wet and sluffy this debris is. So I, I keep using the word slough and that's perhaps not totally correct. The, the word slough really just kind of refers to a kind of liquidy mess of dead skin and infection, basically. So if you say a wound is sluffy, that's usually a sign that there's an infection and there's a colony of bacteria which have created a nice kind of slimy biofilm, which is something that the bacteria make to hide in and, and, and protect themselves. And of course, there'll be like liquidy dead skin in there and stuff. So when you say something looks sluffy, it, it basically means it looks like a, a kind of like an infected mess, really. Um, but uh, again, just trying to hoover some stuff up here. I've seen this patient many times. And again, maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but I, 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 I swear there is some bone remodeling there. But I'm, I, I'm probably just looking too much into it. I have referred this patient to a very, very reputable ENT doctor. And uh, I've shown that. There's the eardrum back there. Lovely. Um, 
I've referred this patient to ENT and um, we'll see what they can do. You know, the ear at the end of the procedure didn't look pretty in that sense, but um, there's only so far you can take these procedures before the patient can, can tolerate no more. So I thought they were a real trooper actually because I was able to clear out the ear quite, you know, quite successfully. I would have really liked to, to spend a bit more time and just, you know, debride the whole thing, but of course there's no anaesthetic. There's no anaesthetic during these procedures. So we, we just have to do what we can. And then um, this patient has started on caniston drops. Not that that will solve the problem entirely, but um, it, will, it will go some way before um, they need suction again. So it will elongate that time out. Um, fine, I will see you in part two of this video and we'll have a look at the Candida albicans under the microscope.